Hey, what is going on you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape and welcome to a brand new loot video for you all today. So today I bring you all loot from 50 hours of Konar Slayer. And I know that I've done some Konar Slayer videos in the past such as 100 Brimstone Keys and of course the 30 hour of Konar Slayer 1. But lately I've been seeing a lot of you guys ask for loot from 1000 Abyssal Sires. So I figure that I want to do that video very soon and I need to get some Slayer points for that. So why not do another Konar Slayer related video? Starting at 100 Slayer points and 23.9 million Slayer XP, what you guys are about to see is 50 hours done in 3 days, 15 hours the first and second day, and 20 hours on the third. I have since taken like 2 days off because that was a long intense grind throughout those couple days doing all this Slayer. I was also killing Ents on my Iron Man in the Woodcutting Guild the whole entire time too, so I had to focus on that account and of course read the Twitch chat, so it was kind of hard to multitask at times, but I had some pretty cool tasks and on Honestly, no complaints. You know, you kind of get three things in one with this video. Not only do you guys get to see some Slayer loot from many different monsters, but you also get to see hard and elite Clue Scroll caskets, and of course the infamous Brimstone Keys, which we will save towards the very end of the video. And if you want to just skip to that exciting part, I don't blame you. Just check out the uh, pinned comment below. I know that this is definitely a long video. I know some of you guys really like the long videos, and some of you not so much. You know, just kind of there for the highlights. Completely understand both sides, but uh, yeah, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Started off with a steel dragon task and then we ventured on over to hydras and uh, instead of killing the alchemical hydra, I did kill the small ones. Mainly because I was trying to maximize the amount of points that I could get and I would do certain boss tasks like for example these Dagoneth kings here, but other boss tasks that just took way too much time, I tried to avoid for the most part and I did get a lot of hydra tasks, but as I mentioned before, you know, you will see a lot of clue scrolls in this video and those small hydras certainly drop a lot of hard and elites. So I was very happy anytime I did get assigned that task. And obviously the higher the combat of the monster that you kill while doing Konar Slayer, the more likely the chances are for you to receive a Brimstone Key, which is very good for these Dagoneth Kings because they are such high combat. And unfortunately, other than of course a few clues and a Seers and Warriors Ring, I didn't really have any luck with this DK task. But I did manage to pick up a few keys, so that's nice. Same thing pretty much happened with my next task, which happened to be Kraken. I was getting a lot of boss tasks early on in this video surprisingly and I really do enjoy Kraken tasks especially trying out the Sang staff which is the theater of blood staff uh, for the first ever time there and I virtually never had to bank I didn't even need to use prayer or any food so that was really incredible and I didn't get a trident or anything special from that just a few keys and one task that I actually wish I would have blocked before coming into this video would be Drake's I never really knew how bad they were until so many different people in my twitch chat kept asking me why I was doing this them. And then I realized, you know, they're very slow and they don't really drop anything profitable at all. You know, at least with Hydras, you can expect to maybe complete a Brimstone Key or something. But yeah, the Drakes, I definitely should have blocked beforehand. But moving on, we did get a few Wyvern tasks, both Skeletal and Fossil Island. And they never disappoint, you know, I always get Brimstone Key from these tasks. And on top of the Brimstone Keys, you can definitely expect some really nice Alkables as well as some rares, even from the Fossil Island Wyverns. One of them being Granite Boots which actually are 1 mil, and funny enough, when I did loot from 1,000 Ancient Wyverns, I believe these boots were 3.5 mil, and now they are all the way down to 1 mil, and as it goes for the Granite Longsword, I believe that was 500k, and now, just about a year and a half later, it is down to 26k. That is crazy. I mean, you think the economy's going bad in the real world, then you look at the RuneScape one, I mean, certain items really do go down over time, but then again, there are some items that go up over time, so I can't complain too much. And back at another steel dragon task. This is our second one of the video and we did manage to get a dragon plate skirt, so at least this wasn't for nothing. Really don't get too excited when I get a metal dragon task. I don't think any of us do really, but the dragon hunter lance does run through those dragons very quickly and I use the lance at a lot of different monsters. I would definitely say the top two weapons that I use for this video uh, would definitely be the rapier and the dragon hunter lance. Just two incredibly accurate weapons and definitely worth the price, although they are a lot of money these days. And one task that I was actually very unfamiliar with was Dark Beast in the Iowerth Cave. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's basically in the Elf City. And uh, I was getting some crystal shards from Dark Beast that I was killing, and I looked those up, and apparently those crystal shards can be used for a future loot video, which is going to be uh, enhanced crystal key chests. And I was also talking to someone at the Grand Exchange today, and they told me that I can do some farming in order to get more of these shards, and that way I can get that video done even faster. So I'm really excited about that. You guys hopefully will see that within 
the next two months, I would say, it is going to take quite a while to get enough of those shards to do 1,000 enhanced crystal key chests. But I just wanted to throw that idea out to you guys, see what you guys think. Uh, maybe let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you're looking forward to. Moving on though, here we are doing a cow fight slayer task. I did not do cow fight queen. It's still something that I've never even done more than 10 times before. So I just went about killing the guardians, the very high levels, and they don't really drop anything, but of course you can expect to get some brimstone keys from them as well. And back at another dragon, this time rune dragons, and I got this task I think three times throughout this video, which was awesome because you can always expect really good drops from rune dragons, a lot of alkables, and a lot of dragon items as well. And speaking of dragon, anytime that I would get dragon bones or hydra, drake, worm bones, whatever bones they would be, I would always be using my bone crusher necklace so that not only was I getting slayer and strength XP throughout this video, but I was also getting a ton of prayer XP as well. Couldn't really bring it to this task here over at Zolra, because Zolra doesn't really drop any bones, but we did manage to do a lot of kills in one inventory with that Sang staff, and of course get an elite clue scroll on top of some more brimstone keys, so it was a nice task. And another item that I was bringing in my inventory uh, throughout the whole video was a rune pouch, because I was on Lunars, and any time that I finished a task, instead of using my fairy ring and going all the way back to Konar for a new one, I would just use NPC contacts since I was on the Lunar spellbook. Now, if you do have diaries completed, I'm pretty sure you can teleport directly to Konar along with a lot of other great advantages and bonuses with those diaries of Kebos completed, but you guys know me, I'm still slacking on the diaries, so I just went with uh, NPC contact, but hopefully I do a diary and a quest related video soon. I think it's understandable for me to not have an Inferno cape, you know, you guys give me some slack on that, but definitely not the quest cape or the achievement diaries. Been getting a lot of complaints lately on that, and I completely understand. It's, it's pretty ridiculous that I still haven't done them all yet, seeing as much as I play, so, and uh, especially how helpful they all will be. So learn from my mistakes, get your diaries completed. Was on Runelite, of course, the whole entire video too, which was very helpful with the canon spots as well as all the clue scroll puzzles and answers. Uh, really just solves all your puzzles for you. Still getting used to it, but, uh, you know, we are using Runelite more and more these days, so big shout out to that. And as you can see in that quick little clip there, the bank tab was growing. I think we were over halfway into the video and we had over 36 brimstone keys at this point. My prediction going into this video was 50 brimstone keys for 50 hours. I figured that was a pretty on point uh, prediction, you know, one brimstone key every single hour. But since we got so many Hydra tasks and so many Drake tasks, as well as just so many different monsters that were high levels, uh, that I could also use a cannon. And there was even a few Dust Devil and uh, Smoke Devil tasks where I could just barrage and cannon get a lot more kills per hour and a lot more tasks done per hour as well. I definitely was going over the drop rate that I was predicting, so that was really nice to see. And one really nice thing that happened uh, midway in was, of course, me finishing a brimstone key from all these Hydra tasks because I was able to get the three parts that you do need, the fang, the heart, and the eye. And yeah, that was a solid three mil to the bank tab, so that was uh, really nice and really surprising because the drop rate is very high on all those parts from the small Hydras. And there would be occasions where I would kill the alchemical one uh, just a few times, though. I'd probably do like five alchemical Hydra kills per task. Nothing too crazy, just a few kills to please some people, you know. And also maybe get a shot at the claw, because that would have been a huge boost to the tab overall. But yeah, most of the time I was just hoping for fast tasks to maximize the amount of points that I could get an hour. Because Konar's really the top dog, you know. Anytime you do finish 10 tasks, you do get the biggest bonus from Konar. That's why you see a lot of people do Terrail skipping, which is essentially using a low-level Slayer Master called Terrail for 9 Slayer tasks. And then on the very last one, you would do Konar, and you would get a massive bonus. I might actually be doing a video on that in the future, because I think it's a pretty cool idea that not everybody knows about. And I could still make for some interesting loot. You know, you get a lot of beginner clues and easies and meds from the low-level tasks. And then, of course, all the high-tier loot that you're kind of seeing in this video. So you guys might see that uh, before I do the Sire video. Not too sure yet. We're just going to have to see how the Slayer points play out. So we'll see at the very end how many we do get. And if you think that'll be enough for a 1,000 Sire, let me know in the comments below. I do, of course, have that Max Kate perk as well, where I could possibly get a back-to-back -back Slayer task. So that could come in handy for that video as well as any other Slayer-related video. Did see some superiors when killing Dark Beasts as well as Abyssal Demons, but didn't really get anything too crazy from them. But I did see my first whip drop, which was uh, pretty later on into the video. About 2.4 mil from that, so that was nice to see. And uh, when I went back to Alchemical Hydra for the second to last time, I did get a Hydra Tail, which is pretty rare, but not really worth anything. That's actually what they used to make the Dragon Bone Necklace. And that Dragon Bone Necklace, since it does convert into a Bone Crusher Necklace, uh, was really useful for the Catacombs, 
especially on tasks like dust devils and even jellies, which I think I forgot to bring in in this inventory. But yeah, you do get a lot of prayer points back when you bring necklaces like that, so that's always nice. Nice to save money seeing as prayer and super restore potions are at an all-time high of 14.4k. Absolutely ridiculous. And we did get another Dagoneth King task, but unfortunately it was assigned as a boss task, which means the max number I think was 33 or 35 to kill. So I did do the whole task and of course got another warrior's ring, but decided to do one more Dagoneth kill off task because I just had a good feeling. And go figure, I did manage to get a Berserker ring. And uh, most of my chat was telling me, no, you can't add that into the video because it wasn't on task. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So yeah, that's that. I got it because I was on task and it just so happened to be achieved off task. Ah, eh, whatever. You guys know the rest. So, you know, extra 2.3 mil to the price check. Every bit helps. Uh, I was dying my fair share as well. You know, there would be occasions where I would just look away for two seconds on a certain monster and just drop dead. Most of the time it was just on bosses. Uh, but like I said, I was trying to avoid bosses so that I could get more points. And overall, I was just getting so many Hydras and so many Drake tasks and different dragons and whatnot. I mean, I will say, Konar, you will see a lot of variety uh, as it goes for the monsters and the loot, but there were times where I just saw a lot of repetition. I mean, I don't know, maybe the days were just kind of blending in, but nevertheless, we are coming to a close here, just finishing this Hydra task and moving on to the hard and elite clue scroll that I did get from it, and then finishing this loot from 50 hours of Konar Slayer with a Dust Devil task. I did actually get two superiors during this task, and and unfortunately for me, I did not get an imbued heart or anything else, you know, still dry from these superiors, which is really unfortunate. Never had an imbued heart on any of my accounts. But just like Third Age, that is a big goal of mine one day and we will get it. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. 50 hours of Konar Slayer has been completed in three days time. One of my most dedicated grinds. I mean, this was more intense than the Corp video as it goes for the hours put in. Definitely not the clicking. Uh, clicking wasn't too bad, but we did finish with 64 brimstone keys and before we open all of those we are going to price check all of the items individually i know i was on rune light for this video so you may be shaking your head asking why did we calculate things that were already calculated for us but it is tradition and uh, i was pretty much just unaware that the bank tags were on so that's my fault but yeah let's go ahead and get into this price check see how much we made from the very first price check we did have 2.2 mil and uh, moving on to the second one there is a lot of items to go through this was pretty much all of the bones, the rune items, and all the seeds that we did get throughout these 50 hours. Did expect some more Dagoneth King tasks, or at least I was hoping for more, but you know, it is what it is. We did come out with just about 9.2 mil from that price check. And moving on to the second one, this is all of the dragon items, the Addy items, the fire staves, all the battle staves in general, the rune bars from those rune dragons, which was an additional 2 mil to the price check, and of course the abyssal whip. So that third price check coming out to be 8 mil, and then we move on to the fourth fourth price check, which is uh, pretty unique that I forgot to mention the dragon knives that we did get from those small hydras as well, which was an additional 1 mil. So yeah, the fourth price check coming out to be 3.2 mil overall. And coming to a close, the fifth and final price check, this is all of the rings, this is the occult necklace, as well as the Zolra loot and the ancient wyvern loot, and the brimstone ring that we did get from those hydras, which was the top dog item at 3.6 mil. That price check coming out to be 9.8 mil. So the overall loot from 50 hours of Konar Slayer just in the drops themselves, not including the brimstone keys, not including the clue scrolls, comes out to be 32.4 mil. Not the best, uh, it's definitely a lot less than what I made in the 30 hour loot video, but in that video we were lucky enough to get armadillo pieces along with a lot of other good RNG, so you can't be lucky every time, but maybe we will see some luck from these brimstone keys or the hard clues. I will actually guarantee you that you're going to see some luck at least one time during all of these openings. Whether it's the keys or the caskets, you're soon going to find out. But yeah, just kind of opening these caskets here, getting a lot of great resources. Uh, it's a shame that gold ore went down so much, uh, as well as just, you know, gems in general. But as it goes for certain seeds, and of course certain other loot like the rune ore, uh, as well as the renar seeds being really high right now, uh, we did make some pretty good money off of this, and you didn't have to actually use the key on the chest. You can actually open the chest by clicking on it once. I don't know why I was doing it the other way. Yeah, I was up for about 24 hours at the this point in the video, so I was really tired, so don't mind the mistakes. Big shout out to everyone who came to the chest opening, really nice you guys to do that, and a big shout out to the Twitch chat as well for getting me through this. A lot of you guys uh, really entertained me, a lot of motivation was there the whole time, even in the times of being exhausted, uh, just had a lot of support from the community, so big shout out to all of you who are there, you guys know who you are, and uh, here we finally are, no dust.
Tusk pieces, unfortunately. Just as it goes for the rare drops, we did get some dragon fruit tree seeds. That's pretty much the highlight from the keys. And overall, the loot from 64 brimstone keys does come out to be 7.2 mil. And again, I did get 14 more keys than I thought I would. So, I mean, I will take that. It's a nice bonus, no doubt about it. Now it is time to open up all of the hard clues, followed by the elite clues. So wish us luck for that. Pretty above average rewards so far. A lot of 200Ks. You know, you don't see that too often in these hard clues. And something else that you don't see too often is the rarest item that I've received from a clue scroll so far, the Gilded Two-Hander. At a rate of 1 in 35,750, we did receive our closest item to Third Age yet, and this being on the main. There was, of course, the Gilded Med Helm that I got a couple videos ago on the alternate account, but we don't have to talk about that one. The Gilded 2H being a 3 mil valued item, uh, definitely one of the highlights of this video, something that I did not expect to see at all, especially from the hard clue scrolls. But yeah, you know, we're finally getting up there in the clue scroll, uh, KC. You know, we are over 600 clues in now, and all of those were just devoted to the loot series. I mean, we've never done an individual hard clue scroll video. I think in the future, you know, loot from 1,000 hard clues is definitely possible, but I'm just not too sure. I still would like to do mediums uh, as well as beginners, and then we can, of course, venture onto hards one day. From all these 17 hard clue scroll caskets, though, we did walk away with just about 4.6 mil rounded up. So that is not too bad. Now we are going to go ahead and see if we get any luck from the nine elite clue scroll caskets. Uh, you know, a lot of ornament kits from the hards as well as from the elites, but sadly those are just not worth anything. Did manage to get a giant boot though, which I will say I never knew existed until now. And it makes for quite the hat, so I did have to put that on shortly after I opened all these. Kind of looks like a burnt loaf of bread, but you know, fashionscape is fashionscape. And yeah, just kind of finishing the openings here. A lot of 200k a lot of 100ks and unfortunately still nothing from the elite clues all right though we did get the gilded and we did get the boot so you know i will take it and uh yeah overall just about 45 mil profit from all of the clue scrolls all of the brimstone keys on top of all of the slayer loot uh, and about 50 hours of konar slayer spent over about 15,000 cannonballs as well as a decent amount on runes and potions but not too much to where we lost money i would still say without a doubt we profited over 35 mil and uh, over 1300 slayer points were gained so it's a good dent in all the slayer points that we are going to be needing for loot from 1000 abyssal sire which was the goal from the start and we did make some good money and we had a lot of fun so with all that being said guys thank you so much for watching the video and i will see you guys in two days with another one it'll either be brutal blue dragons or herb boxes so until next time mr no sleep out